Good morning and welcome to Mass today. We'll use the Colleton readings for the 13th Sunday after Trinity and I'm very grateful to Kevin who has agreed to break the word for us this morning. Uh, tomorrow is the Walsingham Mass at 10 o'clock and then Lucy Ingram's wedding later in the afternoon. Uh, please pray for her and for David at the beginning of their married life. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of whose only gift it cometh that thy faithful people do unto thee true and laudable service, grant we beseech thee that we may so faithfully serve thee in this life that we fail not finally to attain thy heavenly promises. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, beginning at the 16th verse. To Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promises of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come, to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Here endeth the epistle. The 
Holy Gospel is written in that according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can't think of another Jesus parable that has permeated our cultural awareness as much as the Good Samaritan. Its lesson, or perceived lesson, has been quoted by many from Dr. Martin Luther King to Bob Dylan and infamously Margaret Thatcher. We hear people called Good Samaritans on the news. We've heard the parable countless times from Sunday school onwards. We know what it means. We get it. Ironically, though, I think it's this familiarity that allows us sometimes to pass by on the other side without really paying the parable as much attention as maybe we ought. But how do we re-engage with a story so well known? Well, St. Ignatius came up with one way in his spiritual exercises, beloved of retreat leaders and, wearily it appears, theological college lecturers. Basically, it involves us entering the story in our imaginations, immersing ourselves in the sights, the sounds and smells of the action, inhabiting one of the characters or the bystander to try and gain a new perspective. If we do this with the parable of the Good Samaritan, what character do we imagine ourselves to be? I'm willing to have a punt and say that like me, it would be that of the Good Samaritan. Maybe that of the priest or Levite, though deep down we know they're closer to us than we care to admit. And probably not the donkey. But how about the person lying bruised and bloodied on the ground? simply referred to as a man. Could that be us? Well, my friends, yes. Yes, it could. You see, on the one hand, we are given an example of what loving your neighbour looks like, whoever they may be, and it's a perfectly legitimate response to read it that way and leave it there. However, if we dig a little deeper we see in the Good Samaritan someone whose compassion knows no bounds, whose love is unconditional, who does what he does in humility and sacrifice. This way, the Good Samaritan suddenly becomes someone whose example we will find hard to follow. It's someone we know we are not, but it is someone we can and are called to be but we need help. We need to acknowledge that sometimes, indeed often, we are the ones who are found on the roadside, the ones who are wounded, grieving, lacking in faith, despairing of humanity. It is then that Jesus is the Good Samaritan who picks us up, attends to our wounds, and carries us to the inn. And it is there, and for in, read, church. We are healed in the community of faith, restored, forgiven, and nourished with the sacrament we are soon to receive. It is where we learn to be the, like the Good Samaritan, where we learn to become Christ-like and Christian disciples, and where Christ, who has already paid our debt, returns in the Eucharist to commission us to go and do likewise. That last command of the parable must have really stung the young lawyer and the rest of the religious establishment. But it shouldn't do us. In order to become Christ-like, the Good Samaritan, we must 
having acknowledged our need of God's forgiveness and love, go and do likewise. Meet those on the road who are hurting, grieving, the lonely and disadvantaged. Be like Christ to them. Build them up in our communities of faith and in turn send them out as disciples too, all in the knowledge and gratitude that we do none of this in our own strength. We couldn't do it in our own name, but only in the name of the one who has done it for us and continues through us. In the beautiful cathedral of Chartres, there is a window that intertwines the story of the Good Samaritan with that of the fall of humanity, demonstrating the way back to salvation through love of Christ and love of neighbor. All we must do is indeed go and do likewise in the strength of Christ and never our own, as only then will our light so shine before others that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors and specially thy servant Charles our King, that under him we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto his whole council and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. 
and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death, and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, of mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. 
O Lamb of God, who takest take away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and thus to assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesu Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.